Hi, it's Terry Dennery from the MathWorks. So in this video, we're going to move our attention from the motor drive to the mechanics, right? Our mechanics is quite simple, almost as simple as it can be at this point. You know, it's a constant inertia shaft and it receives torque and it moves. And we measure that movement through the angular velocity. So we've set up essentially a torque angular velocity interface, All right? So we're going to do a little bit more elaborate mechanics this time. It's going to be a four bar linkage. An electric motor drives the assembly, and I'll just hit run so you can kind of see how it moves. So that motor is pretty important. We'll kind of see how it gets interpreted as we bring this into Simulink. So all this is developed in my favorite mechanical modeling tool. It's called Simwise 4D. And we got a really nice you know, means of bringing this into Simulink. So let's get back to MATLAB. And we'll go to this app right here. It's called Get Geometry. And so it's an app that I offer, authored myself. And I wrote a bunch of MATLAB um, functions that essentially work with the API of Simwise to bring it all in. Let me just kind of click on this button. And um, and so basically it's going into to Simwise, capturing all the information that really kind of defines what that mechanism is and brings it all into Simulink. Mostly it's the three bars. It's called a four bar linkage because of the ground connection and it essentially establishes the fourth bar. But it's the, the mass and the inertia information, all the geometry information that defines the, the connection locations and so forth, right? And, um, and we're, able to bring this into Simulink because there's a tool called Simscape Multibody, which is um, a rigid body dynamics tool as well and is very good at receiving that same description. And so very quickly, we have the mechanism inside Simulink. I'm waiting for it to finish. I want to hit that, that run button as soon as it's done. Um, but but it, anyways, it's employing Simscape Multibody and you'll see you know, some of the elements of Simscape Multibody, for example, right here. You know, these are transform blocks, which are very useful for kind of defining, you know, some of the geometry of this overall assembly. But I can hit Run now, and uh, you know, one of the really great things about Simscape Multibody is you get animation for free. And I think mechanics is very much about pictures and animation, right? And so we can see for the most part it's working. And there's a little bit of explanation, but I'll simply say for right now, we have a motor. It's a perfect bearing on the motor. Therefore, it does not impose any torque at all on the system yet. And the system's moving merely because it's initialized in, in what I'd call an unstable equilibrium. And so basically this guy and this guy, guy are each like inverted pendulums. They got kind of this crossbar connection. Right, so instability is a common thing that needs to be addressed in mechanics, and I don't think there's much better ways than to do it with feedback control. All right, so anyway, so let's kind of get this in a form that will be very useful for us. Actually, I'm going to go to our our current model that we've been working with to really um, again. Um, kind of address what we need out of this, right? And certainly we need this kind of torque, you know, uh, in an angular velocity configuration for our forward mechanics in our plant. But there's also the fact that we're using our knowledge of what this this mechanics is in, in our feed forward controller, right? And it's here that we want to set up the mechanics so that we tell it how to move and we receive kind of the torque that would be required to do that. All right, so hopefully that kind of makes sense, but we're going to essentially create two subsystems, right? And so the first one will be our forward mechanics. Let's create that subsystem. I'll simply call it mechanics, All right? It's already set up to receive motor torque. We need to set it up so that it can measure angular speed which I'll call W, and I'll put in those units of radians per second, right? So that's not what this is yet, though, right? And with the import, I set it up in a way I think it's a real good idea, right? So that it exports all the useful mechanical information 
of that motor in the form of a bus and I simply configure the bus to receive speed. In a moment we're going to kind of do the inverse mechanics and we'll set it up so they'll receive torque as well in, in that version. But anyways very quickly we got our forward mechanics set up pretty nicely for us. Okay. And so now let's do our inverse mechanics. Well it's basically the same mechanism and it's really mostly kind of config configuration things that we're going to do. So we just kind of copy that subsystem. We go inside and let, let's get what we need. All right. And so the output I already began talking about. It's going to be torque. I'll just call it T. And I'll put in units of Newton meters. All right. And let's go into our bus. and replace speed with torque. All right, so we've got the output set up nicely. Now this looks like it'll be a little bit harder, but actually there's, again, things that we can do because we're defining our own interface and we can kind of customize it to what we need it to be. All right, and so, so anyways, it's looking for a motion input. We know that that's a three component vector on position, velocity, and acceleration. And I'll simply say that the units for each of those will be defined in terms of radians and seconds. So I'll just put in radian or RAD comma S, right? Now, this is a three component signal. This previously was a scalar signal expressing torque. And it turns out the fix is really pretty easy to do. And so part of the, oops, let me move this over. You can really see it. Part of the fix is just to come in here. And notice this is going to change its name when I do this. this is, instead of it being in a, a configuration to receive torque, let's have it receive motion. Notice this name will change. It's got the PVA designation for a motion command. And so quick, pretty quickly, we kind of got this working. right? And I think I'll just kind of do a quick check. And what I'm going to do is drive the... Uh, the forward mechanics with the torque generated by my inverse mechanics. Okay, and let's come here. Let's get that same motion command. Let's bring it in here. We'll paste it. We will compare it. And so we'll put that into the scope too. And then finally, we want to only compare the velocity as calculated by this motion command, which I know to be the second signal carried by that. All right. And let's go ahead and hit run. And I think this will work, but that's why you check it out. All right. And so what we're going to see, I believe, is this little inverted parabola for velocity. Again, my familiar, familiarity with the signal, I, I expect that, which is exactly what we get. And we'll see that it does it really well at first. But ultimately, uh, it puts it back into that vertical position, which we know to be unstable. And ultimately, it will go through oscillations, where it will be essentially tipped by the gravitational moments that build up very rapidly as it begins to, to drift. Okay. At least that's the way I like to describe it. And it's, it's always good to kind of check the animations. It's doing great. Then all of a sudden, you know, the, the one responding to torque simply falls off. And we see that. All right. Anyways, but we're doing good. And I'm pleased with what I'm seeing so far. And so let's copy this into our other model now. And so I'll just paste both those right there. All right, the basic idea, you know, is that this goes in this box and this goes in this box, All right? And so it's Control X, just cut it out of there. Let's go in here, let's paste it. All right, let's make them both the same size, and let's make them the size of this one.
okay it's weird sometimes uh as you make videos uh things don't work quite as well uh i don't know if it's some weird kind of conflict between the two but i'm just going to do this by hand and i'll make it smaller than it needs to be but this isn't such a bad way of doing it and yeah that looks good all right and now let's do the same thing on this guy and i'll paste that in right there all right and we will delete that All right, and uh, I promised that that PID would deal with the instability. Let's see if I was correct. All right, and so uh, you know, let's see if I set the whole thing up correct. All right, so let's hit run. Now it took place pretty quick. Let's do one more observation of that. So I'll run it in playback mode. And it certainly looks really good in the animation. And then, you know, again, reminding you, this is a scope that we continue to look at to, to uh, identify the success of the, the changes that we make. All right. And um, so any, anyways, I'm quite pleased at this point. Right, and so we've included much richer mechanics, and hopefully showed that through a tool like Simwise, and you know, there's certainly lots of videos out there where I import all kinds of complex uh, me mechanisms from tools like SolidWorks and Katia and ProE, and you know, all these really great mechanical design tools, that that we have a means to getting very rich mechanics into Simulink because of Simscape multi-body, but also the ability to interface with all those great mechanical design teams out there through their use of you know all the the uh, the important CAD tools. So, anyways, uh, I think we're we're proceeding uh, very nicely, and uh, thank you.